Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We want to welcome you all to the 84th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Belkuta, to be delivered by Professor Michael Ayodele Ido. Right now, the procession is on its way into the hall. Please, as soon as they come in, let us rise for the procession. Please, let's rise. Let's rise for the procession as they file into the hall. We want to welcome the procession as they step into the hall. For this 81st inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. And the lecture is to be delivered by Professor Michael Ayodele Ido. So, May we take the national anthem.
Thank you very much. Please let's have our seats. Once again, I say welcome to the 81st inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkota, in the series of its inaugural lecture. Today's lecture is going to be delivered by Professor Michael Ayodele Ido. So, please, uh, leading uh, the high table today, let's quickly take the introduction and we have uh, the chairman of this inaugural lecturer and vice chancellor, Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkota, Professor Ulushola Babatunde Kende, fellow Genetic Society of Nigeria, fellow Institute of Health and Safety. Thank you very much. We also have with him uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Professor Christian Ikeobi. You're welcome, sir. The Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development is also seated, Professor Kola Adebayo. You're welcome, sir. Our Registrar, Dr. Bola Adekola, is on seat also. Representing the Acting Bossa, we have uh, Mrs. Adejoke Kola Wale. You're welcome, ma. University Librarian, Dr. Abayo Mikende Owulabi is also seated. You're welcome, sir. And we have the Dean of the Inaugural Lecturer. I'm saying, talking of the Dean, College of Food Science and Human Ecology Co-Fed, Professor Wasil Afolabi. You're welcome, sir. And the Acting HOD, Department of Food Science and Technology, Dr. Olatodu Esther Kajiao, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, most of us are conversant with the biblical verse that says, man shall not live on bread alone. But for this 81st inaugural lecture, it's going to be about bread and all its distinct parts and elements that it's made up of. Therefore, let us welcome our FUNAB 84th inaugural lecturer, a professor of food science and technology, and the former dean of the College of Food Science and Human Ecology, who is ready to take us through the lecture titled Composite Flour Technology for Sustainable Bread Production, Nutrition and Food Security in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Michael Ayodele Ido. You're welcome, sir. We also welcome the family of Professor Ido, led by Mrs. Felicia Ido, his wife, and the beautiful children in the colorful attire radiating in the front seat. You're also welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome the members of Kofek family. Here seated, they came out uh, in mass to support their former dean and one of them. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Welcome the deans and directors here seated. We appreciate you and all our guests will welcome you. And most especially, we also appreciate and welcome members of the CERICOM led by the chairman, Professor Adegoki Bakare. Please a round of applause for yourself also. For putting on this putting up this so to this end please permit me to call on our vice chancellor professor olushola baba to the candy to come and welcome or introduce the inaugural lecturer and for vice chancellor's uh, opening remark you're welcome sir thank you very much um distinguished ladies and gentlemen first of all please let me apologize that we're starting this program a bit behind schedule it was due to another assignment that we had to conclude. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, the University Registrar, the Acting Re Bursar of the University, ably represented here, the University Librarian, the Inaugural Lecturer, Professor Michael Ayodele Do, the Inaugural Lecturer, may I ask that you please step forward? and remain standing. The Dean, College of Food Science and Human Ecology. The Deans of other colleges, Student Affairs and Postgraduate School. Directors of institutes and academic centers. Head, Department of Food Science and Technology. Other heads of departments and units, all academic and non-teaching staff, members of the Idowu family, all special guests and friends of the university, gentlemen of the press, 
distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Great Funabites. Great Funabites. Thank you very much. It is with great delight that I welcome you all to the 81st inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, Nigeria. The inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Michael Ayodele Dowu, was born on October 31st, 1953, to the family of late Pastor Ezekiel Agbola Idowu and late Mrs. Debra Oniwekwe Idowu, Ni Oguntunde, both of Ikeno Oshun State. is the fourth child and only son of his parents. <laughs> Professor Michael Idowu commenced his educational career in 1958 at Christ Apostolic Church Primary School, Ikeno. He attended African Church Secondary Modern School, Ikeno, briefly before he proceeded to Akeonro Grammar School, Ikeno, Oshun State, for a secondary education between 1966 and 1970. Professor Edu worked briefly as an auxiliary teacher at St. Mark's Anglican Secondary Commercial Modern School, Oshogbo, between 1971 and 1972. He proceeded to Baptist High School, Iwo, for his high school certificate in 1973 and gained admission with federal government scholarship into the then University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, Ife, in 1974, where he bagged Bachelor of Food Science and Technology degree in 1979. Professor Edu later obtained his Master of Science, MSc degree in Food Science and Technology at Obafemi Awolowo University, Ife, in 1988, and subsequently his Doctor of Philosophy, PhD degree in food science at Laduke Akintola University of Technology, Ogbumosho, in year 2006. Professor Idowu started his career as a lecturer three on 1st September 1981 at the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro in Ogun State. He later transferred his service to the University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, as lecturer two in 1991 and rose through the ranks to become a professor on 1st October 2013. Although Professor Edu started his research career in composite flower technology, he has diversified into other areas of food research, such as value addition, product development, and food storage stability stroke chef life studies. His long years of experience, over 40 years in teaching, research and extension at the tertiary, that is the polytechnic and university levels of education, made him to have a great and positive impact on the lives of his students. His research efforts have resulted in the publication of over 90 articles in learned journals and other outlets. <laughs> Professor M. A. Ido, who has successfully supervised as major or co-supervisor 30 national diploma students, six HND students, eight postgraduate diploma students, PGD, 125 bachelors of science degree students, 25 master's degree holders, and nine doctorate, that is PhD holders, who have been admitted to their various degrees and diplomas. In terms of administrative experience, Professor Edu has held various administrative positions in the university. He served as acting head, Department of Food Science and Technology, between 2007 and 2009. He was the acting program leader, Food and Nutrition Research Program of the Institute for Food Security, Environmental Resources and Agricultural Research, IFSERA, between 2011 and 2013. And to crown it all, Professor Edu became the Dean, College of Food Science, and human ecology from 2018 to 2021. In addition, Professor Edu also served in statutory bodies and committees of the university, such as the University Senate, Appointments and Promotion Committee of Academic Staff, and several other college or university standing stroke ad hoc committees as a member, 
or as chairman, as a mark of relevance. Professor Edo, who has served as external examiner for undergraduate and postgraduate programs in food science and technology to many institutions in Nigeria, including, but not limited to, University of Ibadan, Federal University of Technology, Akure, Lado Kakentola University of Technology, Ogbomosho, Joseph Ayobabalola University. He has also served as professorial assessor in many institutions. He was an associate editor of the Nigerian Food Journal between 2008 and 2010, and a reviewer for several scientific and professional journals, including Journal of Culinary Science and Technology, African Journal of Food Science, and Journal of Natural Sciences, Engineering, and Technology. That is our own asset, to mention a few. He's a member of the following professional bodies, Nigerian Institute of Food Science and Technology, and the International Society for Tropical Root Crops. Professor Edo had the following distinctions, honors, and awards. Chairman, Board of Governors, Akin Ono Grammar School, Akin Ono National State, from 2020 till date. Merit Award, presented by Christian Association of Nigeria, Akin Ono Branch. Food Ambassadors Gold Award, presented by Ogun State Scout Council, Scout Association of Nigeria at the World Food Day Celebration, held at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, in 2019. Best Lecturer Merit Award, presented by the Nigerian Association of Food Science and Technology Students. No wonder we had a lot of you here. State Patron, Gospel Musician Association of Nigeria, Goman, Oshun State, Chapter, from 2005 till date. And for Professor Edowu, it's not all about education and academics. Professor Edowu is an ordained pastor of Christ Apostolic Church worldwide from 1995 till date. And he's married to Mrs. F.O. Idowu. The marriage is blessed with children and grandchildren. In conclusion, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Michael Ayodele Idowu of the Department of Food Science and Technology to present his 81st inaugural lecture of this university titled Composite Flour Technology for Sustainable Bread Production, Nutrition, and Food Security in Nigeria. Thank you, and God bless you all. Prof, congratulations, sir. You. Yes, you're welcome. The Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, the Registrar, the Bursa, University Librarian, members of the University Co Can Governing Council, distinguished members of the University Senate, Chief Executives of other institutions, Dean, College of Food Science and Human Ecology, Deans of other colleges and Dean Postgraduate School, Directors of Institutes, Centers, and Units, Head, Department of Food Science and Technology, Heads of other departments, Distinguished Academics, and professional colleagues, President, Nigeria Institute of Food Science and Technology, my Lord, spiritual and temporal, members of my, of my immediate and extended families, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, great Funabites. Great Funabites, yeah. great and great and greatest of Dunabites. Yeah. 
Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory for your mercy and for the sake of your truth. Indeed, glory, honor, and adoration belong to God Almighty, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who made it possible for me and you to be alive to see this day. This is the 81st inaugural lecture of this great citadel of learning, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta, the fifth from the College of Food Science and Human Ecology, and the sixth from the Department of Food Science and Technology. I sincerely appreciate the kind permission of the Vice Chancellor, Professor for me to give this lecture. May your reign be peaceful and fruitful. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, as a young food scientist, my research career started with a focus on composite flower technology, hence the title of this lecture, Composite Flower Technology for sustainable bread production, nutrition, and food security in Nigeria. My research trust, however, covers some other areas of food studies, such as food product development and improvement, food quality assessment, and storage stability of foods. This lecture shall cover some of these areas of my research focus. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I shall start this lecture by referring to the Holy Bible in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 10. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. My reflection as a food scientist on the above Bible text actually revealed a number of necessary processing steps between the seed, which is the grain, as a raw material provided by God, and bread prepared by man as a finished product on the table of the eater. This is illustrated in figure one. An evidence that God himself is a food scientist. The processing steps include conditioning, milling, and sieving to produce flour, which is the main ingredient for bread making. The technology involved in the production of flour and bread has existed since the biblical age, as reported in the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 21 where Samson was forced to walk in the grinding mill of the Philistines. For bread production, the processing steps include ingredient mixing, fermentation, proofing, baking, cooling, and packaging. This is illustrated in figure two. And the different processing steps leads to the product, which is bread. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to briefly talk about a few concepts that are relevant to this lecture. And I want to start with bread. Bread may be described as a fermented confectionery product, which is produced mainly from wheat flour water, yeast, and salt by a series of process involving mixing, kneading, shaping, proofing, and baking. Bread is a universally acceptable food, and there has been an astonishing growth in bread consumption over the years in Nigeria because of its convenience, high acceptability, high energy content, and low level of blood cholesterol associated with its consumption. Bread can be of different types 
And you can have bread such as French bread, German bread. It could be also named after the main ingredient that is there. For instance, you can have rye bread. You can have sourdough bread, which has to do with the uh, processing steps. And the mode of preparation is also important in naming uh, bread. The different types is shown on plate two. Bread has become one of the staple foods of the people of Nigeria. And it may be consumed at breakfast, lunch, or supper. Annual bread consumption in Nigeria has been reported to be about 10.5 kilograms per capita. Also, over 10 million loaves of bread are said to be consumed in Lagos alone daily, not accounting for total consumption in other thickly populated cities such as Kano and Port Harcourt. Those information that I just listed gives us an impression of the popularity of bread as part of our diet in this country, Nigeria. The second concept that I want to talk about is sustainability. Sustainability has to do with the ability of uh, a process to continue after it has started. And it's always something that is affected by the environment, by the kind of people, and the availability of fund. Food security. The four pillars of food security includes availability of food to meet people's needs, access to the food itself that is available under normal circumstances, and then the volatility in production or prices, which must not threaten this availability. Then, the last of the factors is the adequate quantity of food for people's needs. Bread as a ready-to-eat food in Nigeria is available, is accessible, and adequate in quantity for people to consume. However, volatility in prices do occur. And because of this volatility in prices, it takes us to the issue of the main ingredient in bread, which is wheat flour. Wheat flour is largely imported in Nigeria, and the cost is largely dependent on forex value of the Nigerian currency. That then means that if we must eat bread, we either import wheat and we continue to pay heavily for it, or we start to use our own materials, particularly agricultural food materials. And so that takes us to the issue of composite flour technology, which is an alternative that can give us bread and also stimulate some other things, some other industrial uh, settings in our system. Let's look at the composite flower technology. The composite flower technology can be described as a mixture of non-wheat flowers with or without addition of wheat flour. Composite flower could therefore be one with 100% non-wheat flour or that that contains blends of flowers together with wheat. The non-wheat flowers include cereals. For instance, apart from wheat, you can have maize, you can have sorghum, you can have millet, roots and tubers such as cassava, yam, plant uh, uh, cocoa yam, or potato. Or you can also talk about legumes and oil seeds, including granite, soybean, melon, or bean seeds. Most of these products are our agricultural products in Nigeria. And these are possible for us to produce in abundance. And ultimately, if we are able to do this, it's likely to bring a better, a lower price 
to the bread that we consume on our tables. Now, if a flour is supposed to be used as composite flour, what do we expect from such flour? And that takes us to the properties of composite flour. One of the things that we must understand is that composite flour, even though it's not from wheat, there are some factors, there are, there are things, qualities that are to be looked at. And one of the things that we look at is the chemical composition of such flowers, and then the physical chemical properties which has to do with the functional properties. Non-wheat flour, for instance, meant to be used in bread making, should be of high quality, particularly in color, particle size, and flavor. The flour should be white in color and should contain no off flavor. The particle size should be less than 180 microns. Poor physical characteristics of flour tend to lower acceptability of composite bread. In fact, one of the uh, problems of composite bread is the fact that uh, the eaters are more used to wheat flour bread they always want to compare it with, 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 with flour bread. And, and once the properties are, are diverting from that, then the rejection can come. Now, the properties of composite flour, though, vary depending on the level of substitution of wheat flour. For instance, farinograph data, such as water absorption and tolerance index, have been found to increase with increasing concentration of non-wheat flour while though development time and stability decreased. Furthermore, extensibility, an area under the exten load extension curves, usually decrease with increasing concentration of non-wheat flour. So the properties of composite flour that is expected have been uh, stipulated like the particle size that we have mentioned and so on. So the non-wheat flour should contain proteins which can, which, uh, when hydrated, they do not display the viscoelastic property of wheat. And that is the unique property of the wheat flour. But rather, what is done is to have what you call a batter. And when you have a batter, instead of the farm properties that wheat flour would produce, then you could have uh, a, a sample that is difficult a little bit to mold, but they are poured. Diluted wheat flour, on the other hand, can, uh, contains gluten. And when hydrated from, they form a weak dough, which can be molded. Wheat flour substitution has generally been found to drastically affect the rheological properties of the resulting dough. Therefore, conventional bread making equipment such as the mixer, dough divider, molder, may have to be modified in order to migrate from uh, the handling of wheat flour to composite flour. So what then is the kind of problem with the quality of composite bread. Composite bread, uh, like we have just said, we have talked about the rheological properties, uh, which has to do with the flow, and then the baking potential. May, usually what is done is to assess a sample of flour, first from its uh, composition, chemical composition, then we also look at the uh, physical chemical properties, and finally we test bake, to confirm that what is suspected uh, can actually be performed. Uh, there has been quite a large number of workers on composite flour. In fact, the initiation, the, the, initial, uh, uh, um, the initial step of, of investigating quality, composite, quality of composite uh, 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 bread actually came from the FAO, the world body, uh, far back in the 1960s. And the intention is that developing countries will be able to 
produce, to use, utilize the local materials that we have in order that we can then start to reduce our dependence on importation for uh, uh, flour, um, wheat flour. With the increasing concentration of non-wheat flours ab above 20%, Specific volume and the total acceptability scores of composite bread usually can be significantly reduced. Various studies have indicated that quality factors of composite bread could be improved by incorporating improvers into dough or butter, such as glycerin monosterate, GMS, HPMC, calcium stearate lactate, CSL, SSL, ethoxylated monoglyceride EMG, and sucrose alloys. Composite flour technology could enrich the final product in terms of nutrition, <clears throat> meaning that we can have an advantage of a better nutrition if we, if, we, if, we, if we eat the composite bread, particularly where legumes and oil seeds, such as soya bean and peanut or melon, are added to our local flowers to enrich the final product. For instance, Otegbayo found the, that incorporation of full fat soy flour into wheat bread increased the availability of protein of such composite bread such that it, 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 it leads to increase in the PER, that is the protein efficiency ratio of some fortified uh, bread samples. The improvement has been attributed to increased lysine, threonine, contents of such bread, which are complementary to wheat protein. However, when flours of low protein content, such as cassava, cassava flour or starch were used as diluents, addition of protein-rich flours only increased the protein content of composite bread to that of wheat bread, as reported by Oni my research contributions. My research contributions I intend to discuss as under two major broad, to broad topics. First, I will talk about some composite flour technology products, and I will also discuss some food product development uh, experiments uh, or improvements of food quality assessments. Talking about the composite flour technology products, I intend to talk about the use of maize flour, the use of cassava flour, the use of sweet potato flour, the use of cocoyam flour in bread making. And uh, finally, I will talk about some of the uh, advantages we could get from using some of these uh, uh, components. The first one is the use of maize in bread. Maize can be used in form of ungelatinized or pre-gelatinized form. The ungelatinized one is the one that is not steamed. The native starch is still there as intact, whereas you could have it in form of pre-gelatinized, that is you have half cooked it, which will modify some of the, uh, 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 the, the, the properties of such uh, samples. When this was done, we found out that 100% wheat flour, when used as uh, a non-wheat component and we bake with it, the samples were rejected, meaning that 100% non-wheat composite flour is likely to be rejected by tasters. That's the first thing we must have in mind. So we then went on to look at the possibility of mixing wheat and these local flowers at, at stepwise, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 100. In other words, total replacement. When this was done, we found out that whether pre-gelatinized or unpre-gelatinized, replacement of wheat flour in percentages cannot exceed 40%. In fact, the 40% is the extreme case. In other words, we can reduce the quantity of wheat that we consume 
in bread by about 40 percent and that will go a long way if it were possible to do to reduce the foreign exchange involvement in such products for instance information shows that composite flour at 40 percent is acceptable but anything higher is not we then try the uh, the use of uh, composite flour and in form of regelatinized one with, with uh, using addition of maize uh, cassava flour and then uh, uh, soy flour to form a, a, a sample of bread which we want to call to, to be characterized, uh, characterized uh, uh, bread that is produced in Nigeria. In other words, if we are unable, if we, if we as a people in Nigeria can agree to say, okay, we want to reduce the content of wheat which we consume, because the, the, the figures is, is alarming. In the last, for instance, in the last three years, the, 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 the amount of wheat imported into Nigeria has risen up to the level of 1.2 trillion in a year. In other words, if we can reduce some of these amount of wheat that we, we import, it will go a long way to improve our economy. For instance, table one shows the myelogram, myelogram pasting viscosity of wheat flour, maize composite, wheat, flour, wheat maize composite flour, and then the quality of bread. And so that takes us to the development of maize, which we call a Nigerian, a, a typical Nigerian bread, in quote, that is a product that is based on composite flour comprising maize flour, cassava starch, and wheat flour. The concept is to utilize properly our local raw materials. This experiment shows that, again, at 100% total uh, uh, replacement of wheat flour will not give us a bread that is acceptable. But at 80%, in other words, if you can have just 20% of wheat flour and then add cassava, add maize flour, then we can get a mixture and which, we can be, which can be baked, and when it is baked, it, it, it can be acceptable to tasters. Provided wheat importation is stopped. In other words, if, wheat is, if, if the 100% wheat bread is not available, people will buy. People will accept even 80%, but not 0% not of wheat. So all this shows us that as a country, we need to determine our priorities and first we must cultivate an attitude of using what we have eating what we produce and if we do this it, uh, it, it, it's not going to be difficult for us to get out of the woods very soon the quality of uh, such uh, products is given in the table two uh, giving us the specific volume, uh, the volume score, the internal characteristics and external characteristics. Many of these that we have talked about, particularly the, the volume score or the, uh, the specific volume, is, has to do with the size of the bread in the market. And you know that consumers anyway will buy by volume. So in other words, the volume, the specific volume that bread comes out with, it's a factor that is very important to the baker. Otherwise, the baker would not make his own profit. So these are one of the pro uh, some of the problems of uh, uh, bread that is made from non-wheat flours. We then went on to look at cocoa yam. And in this experiment, we tried three different uh, varieties of cocoa yam. One, the one that is called taro, the second one that is called tanya, and the third one is the uh, 
uh, Colocasia uh, Esculentus, Colocasia Esculentus B, and then uh, the Ghanaian Colocuyam, which is usually in form of big tubers. It was discovered again that either starch or powder of cocoyam can be used as substitute to replace part of wheat flour in producing bread. The only thing is that this is only acceptable only up to 20%. Anything above 20% is likely to have a product that, is, that retrogrades uh, very fast and becomes stale. The three cultivars you uh, uh, investigated were found to be suitable for biscuit production, whether it is 10% or whether it is 20% or whether it is 100%. It is acceptable at whatever level. So, cocoyam cultivars that were used, like I said, were acceptable for biscuits, but only at 20% level are acceptable for bread making. Table three shows the cultivars uh, and the, the bread and uh, the uh, approximate composition of the wheat and cocoyam flowers. It also, table four shows the amylograph pasting viscosities of wheat, uh, maize composite bread, and the quality in terms of specific volume, in terms of uh, volume score, and in terms of the total score. All this shows that at 20%, uh, cocoyam is acceptable. Wheat, sweet, potato, composite bread. This is another possibility. For instance, sweet potato is very easy to plant and it can yield a lot in various types of soils and with limited amount of uh, 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 rainfall. But many of these are not being used uh, 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 the potential in, in making flour and using the flour for comp uh, as composite bread has not uh, been emphasized. The, for instance, it is believed that the amylose, amy amylase content, the enzyme in, uh, uh, in the sweet potato can be utilized for saccharification purpose and it will also affect the uh, physical properties of uh, the resulting dough and the bread that is produced. Wheat sweet potato composite bread was found to also be acceptable only at very low level of 5%. So, meaning that if it is above 5%, it will show in the uh, the specific volume, it will also show in the uh, uh, kind of acceptance and the, the acceptance drops very fast after 10%. So in other words, the diastatic activity, even if, it, even if we want to utilize it, is not advantageous for, for bread making. Table 5 shows the diastatic activity of uh, sweet potato and uh, it also tells us about the uh, farinograph, water absorption, which are the physical chemical properties of uh, that flower. Quality evaluation of commercial baker seeds. We then look at another factor which has to do with bread, and that is the use of baker's yeast. Because without the yeast, you won't have the leavened bread, which we are all used to. And what is done is to uh, look at about, the, uh, about seven different types of commercial yeast that are produced in the, that are sold in the country. Most of them are imported. But again, it is not difficult for us to, to, to start to produce some of these. For instance, uh, dry, producing our own yeast, getting the single cell, in form of in form that we can use it for uh, subsequent baking and so on and so forth which we also again reduce our dependence on uh, importation 
the sterling properties of bread samples of, that were, were produced from the different yeast was found to correlate positively with yeast leavening activity. And the study highlights the need to control the quality of yeast leavened products such as bread by appropriate choice of commercial baker's yeast. Table 6 shows the characteristics of some commercial baker's yeast and bread quality, uh, such as viability, acidity, and then overall acceptability, and then the staling rate. Quality of the cassava bread as affected by selected improvers. Finally, we, on, before we go on, we, we then try to look at uh, wheat cassava composite bread at the level of 90 to 10, which is the, press, the, the current, currently permitted level. In other words, uh, Nigeria has already legislated 10% of uh, cas uh, cassava flour into wheat to produce uh, composites that are supposed to be used commercially. We then try to look at this and then look at how improvers, for instance, the improvers that are commonly used, that are normally used for wheat bread, were tried for 90%, 10% uh, composites. In other words, 90% wheat, 10% uh, non-wheat, which is cassava, and which we are used to, found out that four commonly used commercial bread improvers, uh, which were used uh, uh, for, which were evaluated for baking properties, were found to be uh, suitable. In other words, the bread samples baked from them, uh, with or without in bread improvers, we found that the dough height during fermentation open spring yield and specific volume of bread samples were determined, and then the bread samples were also evaluated for their sensory and staling qualities. Results showed that dough, dough height during fermentation did not differ significantly, and crumb color, firmness, taste, and aroma were unaffected by addition of bread improvers, oven spring, specific volume, bread shape, cross color, texture, and overall acceptability of bread were significantly different. All the bread improvers that were tried were found to extend the shelf life of wheat cassava composite bread for a period of 24 to 48 hours. The practical implication of this finding is that bread improvers normally used for 100% wheat bread could be used effectively for wheat cassava composite bread at 10% level. Other percent, other higher, higher percentages can also be investigated and most likely the, the improvers are likely to also be applicable. Also, we found out that the bread makers need little or no additional training to handle wheat cassava composite flour for bread making process. Nigeria then can sustain a policy of using wheat cassava composite flour for baking without any serious technical problem. Table 7 gives us the leavening activity of wheat cassava dough as affected by improvers and quality of the bread that is produced. Uh, under it, you have the leavening activity, the bread yield, specific volume of our own acceptability, and shelf life. Product development, stroke improvement, and quality assessment. Under this, I intend to report two major findings that we have done. First is the product development that has to do with development of a winning food. Uh, in developing countries, we know that winning food is, has always been a problem. It's either the child is weaned with less protein, which will eventually show in the kind of uh, stunted growth and so on that the child may have. Many of the uh, winning food that we have in the market 
are produced, either from imported, not done, not not. Uh, most of the raw materials are also import, uh, were, were used, were also not from the country. So we then tried to use some of our own materials. For instance, in this work, we looked at the maize sweet potato mixtures. Maize, sweet potato, soya bean, and granite. All these were combined at different ratios. The difference is that most producers of most investigators used to first of all produce then force it in market put it to market forces and then they start by a lot of advertisement and so on to make sure that people will buy but in this particular work what we did was to use the, the mothers the nursing mothers to first of all look at the different composite uh, that we have we have uh, uh, produced and indicate which one is likely to be suitable for their children. And the composite that the, uh, the components that was found to be acceptable uh, was found to contain uh, the following. In other words, it contains 14.3, 6.4, 2.4, uh, 67.4, 100 for its protein, fat, ash, and carbohydrate content, respectively. Most of these, then the calcium, phosphorus, and iron contents were 59.6, 187.5, and 2.4 milligrams per 100 gram, respectively. While the most predominant fatty acids were linoleic, oleic, and palmitic acids. These results are comparable. In other words, the, the components that we have uh, the, the result of this composition that we, are just, we, we have shows that the winning food can compare, fav, co compete favorably, favorably with imported uh, winning foods. Table 8 shows the proximate composition, which I just stated. The fatty acid composition is on Table 9, showing the different types of fatty acids that are contained and the quantity. Uh, and then table 10 shows the essential amino acid profile, which includes lysolysine, uh, leucine, and so on and so forth. So that means that with this, some of the uh, imported winning foods can, they are not, may not be better than what we can produce, even from our own local, local foods. Then the last of the uh, research that I want to talk about is the adun process. Adun. Adun is a snack that is commonly consumed uh, in form of a meal, uh, flour or starch, and it's a snack that is done by ordinarily roasting of fresh corn, uh, modified by fermentation to obtain a product such as mursa, uh, other snacks, such as kokoro, uh, uh, lampata, abari, and adun, and so on and so forth. But I selected adun as one of those old uh, indigenous snack, which is almost getting extinct now, even though uh, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be a rich uh, sample. So we looked at the composition of adun and find out the process technology of adnu the process technology shows that uh, most of the work that is has to be done has to do with the mix the uh, mixing of the different proportions uh, and the highest proportion that was found there is the case of high fat content and high fat content even though it can give a lot of energy to eaters. But there is also a problem with it. The problem is that it's likely to contribute to a fast decrease of uh, the quality. In other words, over time, the storage stability is likely to uh, come down. So we then went on to do a higher sampling. The first two samples that we uh, that were analyzed 
we are from Abekuta and Ibadan. I don't from Abekuta and Ibadan. We are, we are examined. But when we, the result showed that you have very good profile of nutrients in Adun. Uh, for instance, it was found that Adun was rich in calories. And it is, but it is low in protein. But it's a good source of phosphorus and magnesium. Now, if we want to enjoy this, then we need to have a caution. Because a further, what we did is, uh, further to this particular work, we then sampled across about six states within the Southwest, including Oyo, Oshun, uh, Ogun, and Kwara, up to Kwara, Ondo, and so on. We then sampled quite a large number, about 28 samples. And when we analyzed, we found out that although you have this high quantity of fat that we have mentioned, and the uh, mineral content is also fine. The problem is that there are some heavy metals that were detected uh, in some of these samples. The, 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 the idea is that eaters of adon should be careful, or even manufacturers should find a way by which we can reduce some of these elements that are anti nutrients in our in our adon. So it's, still, it's acceptable, yes, fine, but we, it's, it's with a caution. So in other words, if somebody is taking it all the time, there might be an accumulation of some of these uh, heavy metals, particularly lead, um, um, cadmium, uh, and so on and so forth. Even arsenic is also there, but in very small quantity. Even though it's in small quantity, it is not permitted in such foods. Thank you. The chemical composition and sensory quality of commercial and laboratory adun is as stated in table 11. And that table 11 shows us uh, the different components and the presence of uh, the, particularly the basic phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium, which are useful uh, for the body. But the, when we now looked at the 28 samples, we found out that you could have unwanted elements there. Capacity building. I thank God and appreciate the federal government of Nigeria through the University Council. I've successfully supervised over 130 bachelors, eight postgraduate post diplomas, 25 masters, MSc, and nine PhD who have been admitted to their various degrees. Many of these graduates have become captains of industries, research institutes, and various tertiary institutions in, out, in and outside the country. I have also been involved in the teaching and training of several faculty members of staff in the Department of Food Science and Technology, College of Food Science and Human Ecology, and the university at large. Today, many of them have attained professorship cadre in and outside this university. And among them is the present head of the Department of Food Science and Technology. <laughs> and so many other professors, even within the department. Glory be to God. I therefore want to talk about my recommendations. What are my recommendations? One, I'm making a suggestion 
based on the evidence of high import bills that is accruing because of importation of wheat. For instance, a figure shows that, a statistic shows us that 400 billion naira, 756.9 billion naira, and 1.3 trillion were the bill for years 2019, 2020, and 2021. Meaning that by 22 or 23, you'll be talking of several trillions. Automatically, if this trend continues, it's likely to be a problem for this country. So I'm suggesting a stepwise substitution of wheat flour from the level of 10% that is presently approved and leg uh, legislated to at least 15%. That 5% difference may look small, but when you consider figures of trillion sizes, it becomes meaningful. So that's the first suggestion. A stepwise substitution of wheat flour, we should leave that 10% alone, move over, because we are sure that up to 40 percent you can't even replace so even if we don't want to risk it let's try maybe 15 percent and probably another 20 percent and before you know it we could get to the level by which you can have a bread that is typical of nigeria an increase from the present 10 percent to 15 percent wheat flour substitution therefore is long overdue and could reduce the dependence of the country on importation and foreign exchange. Secondly, I want to suggest agricultural mechanization to produce industrial food raw materials for baking. Many of these agricultural materials that we have mentioned today, whether we are talking of, cash, uh, of, of maize, we are talking of uh, uh, millet, we are talking of sorghum, these are things we can grow in this country in large numbers. And if we do, nothing stops us from increasing the substitution level of our wheat, reduce the importation bill. It will also stimulate agricultural uh, 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 inventions, such that uh, maize, millet, cassava, sorghum, potato, cocoa yam, and so on, they can be grown in large quantities. So through agricultural mechanization. The demand, however, could provide job. In other words, if there's an increase in demand, it's going to compete with staple foods. Because these are staple foods, we are talking of cassava, we are talking of maize, and so on and so forth. And if, this, if the demand now increases, the demand will push us to go and plant more, and if we plant more, it becomes a vicious circle, the economy grows. But if we look it, we just keep it aside, I think that is a problem. The demand, however, could provide job opportunities for the youth and improve economic activities. This is good for sustainability of the composite flower technology. Three, increase funding for research and development. Funding of research and development in our universities and research institutes should not be left to the government alone but private organizations should also be involved. This will improve university-industry relationship, which we are lacking, and increase commercialization of research results. Establishment of a national research center. I want to make a suggestion that this is necessary to plan, execute, monitor, and evaluate researches of national importance, such as such a body should also have the mandate to harvest research outputs from various tertiary institutions and research institutes for commercialization or implementation. Acknowledgement. All honor and glory belong to God Almighty, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Alpha and Omega. He alone is worthy of my praise that I am able to deliver this inaugural lecture today certainly is not by power nor by might, 
but by the power and spirit of God. I therefore give thanks to him, God my maker. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to acknowledge and show my gratitude to some of some people who have contributed in one way or the other to my academic and professional experience and to the success of today, those making me fulfill the destiny of my life against all odds. First, I remember my parents of blessed memory, Pastor Ezekiel Agbola Edu and Mrs. Deborah Kuniwekpe Edu, your care and godly virtues inculcated in me to be honest, hardworking, and to wait patiently for God in every situation I've paid off and are still with me today. I'm proud to have had a father and mother like you rest in perfect peace. <clears throat> to my late uncles, Jacob Batoyebi and Gabriel Adebayoidu, I say thank you for your love and care while you are alive, particularly Uncle Gabriel. <laughs> your sudden departures shook the family. But we thank God the wound is gradually being healed. Also, I'm grateful to my sister, elder sister, late Mrs. Sarah Polonjo Oyebode, and her husband, late Pastor Michael Oyebode, for their love and care while they were around. Rest in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord. My siblings and their spouses, elder and Dickness Oluwole, and Pastor and Mrs. Omoyeni, you are appreciated. Others are elders, Sunday, Idowu, Sunday and Toke Idowu, Messrs. Re Remy and Benga Idowu, Pastor Peter Idowu, Mr. Joshua Idowu, Yemisi and Janet. Thank you all. I also appreciate my father and mother-in-law, Pa David Soladoye Adedokun, and Mrs. Rachel Adedokun of blessed memory. I also appreciate Pa and Mrs. Akanji for their love and best wishes. I wish to express my profound gratitude to all my teachers, dead or alive, who had impacted positively on me in the course of my academic journey. I particularly want to appreciate late Mr. J.O. Sinyabola, my primary three teacher, who advised my father to be gentle with me that he saw a great potential for academics in me. I'm also grateful to my secondary school teachers, especially Mr. Paul Ogujimi and Dr. Tunji Oladako, who encouraged me to have a university degree. Thank you, sirs. I'm grateful to all my lecturers at the undergraduate level in the Department of Food Science and Technology University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, particularly late Professor Esther Balo, who supervised my undergraduate thesis Late Professor A. O. Ogunshua, late Professor J. B. Fashakin, late Professor J. O. Ogundiwi, and late Dr. Ojo. Others are Professor P. O. Ngodi, Professor O. Onayemi, Professor Mrs. Abiose, and Professor I. A. Adeyemi. Divine Providence made me come in contact with my brother, teacher, and mentor, Professor Isaac Adebayo Adeyemi former Vice Chancellor of Bell's University of Science and Technology, Otao Gunseid. He supervised my MSc and PhD thesis and was instrumental to my taking up academic as a career after working with Federal Polytechnic Ilaro for 10 years as a lecturer. I pray that your children and generations unborn will never lack any good thing. I thank the current Vice Chancellor, Professor Olushola Babatunde, Kennedy for giving me the privilege to deliver this inaugural lecture. I appreciate all the former vice chancellors, the founding vice chancellor, Professor Nuru Dean Adedipe, who employed me as lecturer too in 1991, Professor Julius Amioba Okoje, late Professor Isel Folon Shoadu, acting vice chancellor, Professor Ishola Damsi, Professor Uluafemi Olaya Balogun, 
who appointed me as acting head of food science and technology, Professor Olu Shola Bamidele Oyewale, who promoted me professor in 2013, acting vice chancellor, Professor Olonlade A. Enikomei, and the immediate past vice chancellor, Professor Felix Kola Wale Salako, under whom I served as dean, College of Food Science and Human Ecology. I also appreciate all the principal officers of the university from 1991 till date. My special thanks go to the publication committee of this university in charge of this lecture, especially the current champ chairperson, Professor Mrs. H. A. Bodundi. Thank you, ma'am. I'm grateful for, to the federal government of Nigeria for granting me federal government scholarship for my undergraduate studies. I'm also grateful to the British government via British Council, the Association of African Universities, and Bill and Ga Melinda Gates Foundation through University of Greenwich for their scholarship, research, and travel grants at various points of my career. I'm grateful for the cordial relationship of all my colleagues within and outside this university. I also appreciate full, all my professional colleagues from the Nigeria Institute of Food Science and Technology, especially the current chairperson of the Western chapter, Professor Bolanle Akewande. Thank you for coming. To my colleagues in Federal Polytechnic Ilaro, where I worked for a decade before I joined FUNAB, Professor J.O.A. Omole, Mr. K. Maliki, Mr. S.O. Akoja, Professor A. A. Onilude, late Dr. R. Oloyo, and others, too numerous to list. I say thank you. <laughs> to my classmates in primary and secondary schools, especially in 1979 set of Akinorong Grammar School Ikinu, Dikin Remi Afolabi, HRM, His Royal Majesty Oba Olabdakpo Lagunye Siambola, Orisa Jen Yo, Ali of Ili, Pastor Ayo Latunji, Mrs. Rachel, Mrs. Onyida Mola Ajewale, Mr. Kola Alawode, Prince Bayo Adeyemi, and Princess Sua Falabi, to mention a few. I say thank you to the current Board of Governors of the school, particularly the school principal, Mrs. M. Olani Oye, and the media past chairman, Alaji Olawi. I say thank you for coming. I also appreciate my friends and classmates in the university, Professor T.N. Pagbemi, Professor M.O. Oluamukomi, Messrs. O.A. Badmos, F.O.K. Mustafa, and late Mr. Fatoki. May God with, be with you all. I appreciate all members, academic and non-academic, non non-teaching staff of the College of Food Science and Human Ecology, COLFEC, for their confidence in, in my ability and electing me as dean to provide leadership for the college for a single term of three years. My gratitude goes to members of staff and uh, of the Department of Food Science and Technology, especially my current head of department, Dr. Mrs. E.O. Kajiausa. Others are, <laughs> others are late Professor Esu Awunoni, Professor Ogumoela, Professor Obi Oyewale, Professor Mrs. S.V.A. Uzochuku, Professor Mrs. F.O. Ensho, Professor Elo Sonny, late Professor O. Atanda, late Professor Mrs. J.M. Babajide, Professor T.A. Shitu, Professor A.A. Adebowale, Professor A.O.A. Obadina, Professor O.P. Sobukola, Professor A.A. Adeola, Dr. Mrs. G.O. Olatunde, Dr. Mrs. Omidina, Ad, uh, Dr. Adegoke, Dr. Celestina Omahimi, and Dr. Mrs. K. Uju. It is a pleasure working with you all. The retired Chief Technologist, Mr. A. O. o. Joe, Mr. Abayomi, Dr. And Mrs. F. Adeniran, and all other non-teaching staff in the department, you are also recognized. Thank you all for your love and cooperation to my undergraduate and postgraduate students, especially doctoral students. Dr. Mrs. A. O. Pelola Adeyemi, Dr. Mrs. G. O. Olatunde, Dr. Mrs. E. O. Kaji Ausa, Dr. O. A. Akinsola, Dr. Olatunde, 
uh, Dr. Mrs. Adeoye, Dr. Tokwe Abiola, Dr. E.K. O.K., Dr. O.O. Olorode, and Dr. Oni. I appreciate you all. Without you, there can be no me. I wish you all a prosperous and happy future. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, please permit me to express my gratitude to my spiritual father, late Pastor Dr. Moses Imodu Omakagbo, Abaijo, Elder Eso Guntoye, Elder Bayo Adekola, Pastor Zige Oladoshu Odebode Odedele from Christ Apostolic Church in Kinro Ocean State, the English Assembly Board of Elders, and Egbe Ajagun Christi Society of the same church. Thank you for your love and support. Egbe Omogun Christi uh, of Christ Apostolic Church in Saliake, Abe Okuta, and brethren from Christ Apostolic Church at Balaitura or Bantoko, Abe Okuta, you are all appreciated. <laughs> to all the children of God, that God has, children that God has given us, particularly Michael and Larry Olasokan, Femi and Folake Oladipo, Ulusegun and Biola Odebode, Taiwo and Fini Folua Idowu, Funsho and Kenide Jayoba, and Ulukai Ode and Ulua Sheun Ogundele. I say thank you. My grandchildren say ye, Darasimi, Shemilore, Daniel, Iria Yomi Professor, Dorcas, David, Tiwa, Olivia, Murayo, Tife, and Ola Olua, I'm proud of you all. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to introduce, <laughs> recognize, and appreciate my love, friend, companion, destiny helpmate, sister, mother, and wife, Mrs. Felicia Oluwaya Misi Dowu. You have been my strong pillar of, of support through thick and thin for over 40 years. Without you, I am definitely incomplete. I thank you for your love, care, dedication, and submission, particularly care of our children when they were young. I pray you and me will eat the fruits of our labor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, before I stop, let me remind you of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is real and near. I pray you and I will not miss the rapture. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please sing this song along with me. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Uh -huh.
Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you'll agree with me that Professor M. A. Dowu has really thrilled us with his inaugural lecture, the 81st in this university. And therefore, on behalf of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, I present to you Professor Michael Ayodele Dowu. This award of honor as the 81st inaugural lecturer of the university, dated this Wednesday, 6 September 2023. In addition, sir. We also present to you this product from our university. It's a pity our bread is not from composite flour. <laughs> I will have included it here. But then, please take this from us. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Please have your seat. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we depart, I want to appreciate all the entire members of Professor M.A. Dohu's family. We thank you for coming. God bless you all. We also congratulate and thank his colleagues who are here present, all members of Kofi family, of FST family. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the 81st inaugural lecture of this university. God bless you. Please a better round of applause. For the Vice Chancellor, the management team, and the inaugural lecturer. Thank you very much, sir. Just as you've heard, we've come to the end. But permit me, uh, with the permission of the Vice Chancellor and the inaugural lecturer, I think I'm safe to say that man shall not live on flour bread alone, but on cassava bread, aldo bread, and even agege bread. Thank you, sir, for supporting that. <laughs> so please, this is the exit mode. The procession will go through the center aisle to the conference room A, where the deans and directors are to join them there after exit, exiting the hall. All staff, academic and non-teaching staff, to go through exit A by my right-hand side. The guests of the inaugural lecturer will go through exit B by my left-hand side. Students are to remain in the gallery inside the hall. So yeah, your, uh, your package will be given to you. So may we rise for Funabantem.
national anthem. Please let's remain standing while the procession exits the hall in our reverse order. So please once again listen. The procession is going through the center aisle while the deans and directors are to join them in conference room A after leaving the hall. The st staff, all staff, academic and non-teaching through exit A by my right hand side. The guests of inaugural lecturer exit B by my left hand side and students to remain in the gallery. We want to thank you and every one of the guests that came here for this to first inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Bekuta, tied to composite flower technology for sustainable bread production, nutrition, and food security in Nigeria. We appreciate you for making time out to be here, and we thank you all, and pray that you all get back to your destination, safe and sound, by the grace of God. Thank you, and once again, we say, have a wonderful and blessed week ahead. <laughs>